welcome to the stage incoming Senate Health Chair, Senator T.J. Shope, and incoming Democratic Leader for the House of Representatives, Representative Andres Canos. All right, so we have some interesting things going on right now in Arizona, um, but we also have a really exciting time coming up um, with a new governor, a new legislature, and rumor has it over 40 freshmen in this legislative class out of a total body of 90. So that presents us with some interesting opportunities as we go forward. Now, I'm, I have the privilege of knowing both of these leaders, but I am going to ask them to briefly tell that you a little bit about who they are. This is not their legislative priorities or their wish list. Who are you as Arizonans? TJ, do you want to start us off? Yeah, you bet. First off, thank you for having me. A uh, uh, little bit of a last second uh, call to the bullpen here. Uh, if I, uh, as evidence, I don't have a tie or a coat on, so I apologize for that. Um, but uh, President Peterson uh, wasn't able to uh, to join. I, if I find out that he was playing in the snow with his kids um, instead of being here, then well, no, I'm fine. It's all right. Um, you'll enjoy me better anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm T.J. Shope. Uh, uh, I was born in Florence, Arizona at a hospital that closed down like 25 years ago um, and uh, have resided in Coolidge for uh, all uh, except for the three years that I attended Arizona State uh, and um, have uh, you know, grown up in, a, in the grocery business uh, that we just sold about a month ago. So, uh, you know, the American dream continues. You build something, you create it, and you hope somebody uh, gives you a lot of money for all of your work that you have done. Um, I would like to think that it's so much that I'll never have to work for the rest of my life, but alas, I will continue trying to seek employment and or the benefits that the state of Arizona has as far as being a legislator. Um, so uh, we have, uh, so I mentioned we did that for about 70 years. Uh, third generation elected official, my dad was a mayor for a long time. His dad was a city councilman. Um, and on my mom's side, uh, uh, the first generation uh, born here in the United States. Mom and my family's from Mexico. And uh, only in Arizona, right? You get to go ahead and spend four years as a speaker pro tem and, four, and now entering as the uh, president pro tem of the Senate. Uh, it's a wonderful place. To those of you who are uh, not native Arizonans, I know that you got here as fast as you possibly could. And um, it was unusual. I spent the last uh, 10 days in Hawaii sweating because uh, it was like in the 80s uh, on the big island. And I, I sweat a lot. Uh, you know, this is, it's not, it's not very nice. But today, I was ecstatic that it was, you know, when I walked out of the door, it was 35 degrees and I felt pretty darn good. Um, so, uh, I, you know, call me crazy, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, and it, it does feel, make you feel a little bit more like Christmas and the holiday weather. So look forward to, to hanging out with you guys uh, for the next, uh, I don't know when Joan's going to kick this off the stage. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Uh, so mark that down. Um, but uh, look forward to uh, serving with uh, Mr. Cano uh, for the next, uh, I don't know, hopefully we don't go all the way to June 30th, but, you know, we'll see. June 29th. <laughs> June 29th. All right, let's cut that down a, a day. Uh, but I uh, look forward to doing so. I'm excited, generally excited about, about what's going on. I've been there for uh, 10 years. Uh, we'll start uh, my 11th uh, coming up. And at 38, it's hard to, uh, for me to believe that I'm one of the longest serving legislators now. Um, but uh, it is something that I'm excited about, a new challenge and a new opportunity when you have divided government as we do. And I think that we will still be able to accomplish a lot of goals, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about some of those here. Absolutely. And Andreas? Well, 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andres Cano, and I have the honor of serving as the incoming Democratic leader of the state uh, House Democrats, and this is my going to be my fifth year. I first want to thank, uh, of course, Joan for the invitation, and of course to all of you for being a part of this critical industry that is going to transform our state's chapter and our economy. Uh, I also want to, of course, congratulate uh, colleagues on my side of the aisle who are recognized, Representative Daniel Hernandez as well as Representative Shaw for their incredible contributions, and I know Ms. Cobb had to leave, but um, I come to the state legislature from Tucson, Arizona, born and raised by a single mom. Uh, first generation college graduate and as a fellow Arizonan who was elected at the height of the Red for Red movement in 2018 where Arizonans wanted to come together and get us to get along, uh, work together in a bipartisan way and uh, since 2018 the House that uh, Senator Shope, now Senator Shope, um, you know, used to belong to and I think he's always going to be a House veteran. We elected 29 Democrats and in a 31-29 split, what I hope you'll be able to hear from our conversation this morning is how we're going to continue to now progress with a Democratic governor, a Republican Senate, and a Republican House. Uh, I think there's a mandate, Joan, from Arizonans that on the issues where we can agree that we're going to be able to be prioritizing those key priorities. And so that's what I would like you all to know about me in the next two years as I lead the Democratic Caucus. Thanks. Thank you. And, you know, that's a. <laughs> as my children say, don't ever step on applause, Mom. Uh, so, as we, that's a great lead in. So, TJ, what do you see as some of the priorities for next year? Well, I think that, um, you know, as we look forward into the upcoming year, I, look, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat. Gridlock will probably be one of the themes uh, of the upcoming session I, in, in many respects. However, I, I don't know that that's necessarily um, entirely negative. Uh, we think of gridlock being a, a negative word. However, what it also could mean is that many of the things that we waste time on, that we probably shouldn't waste time on, will probably be things that we don't waste time on in the upcoming year. Uh, and, and what that does lead to is the, uh, the bigger ideas, the bigger uh, problems that face the state. I, I have just come, I, I mentioned it was in, in Hawaii. Uh, one of the things I was there uh, doing uh, was uh, representing Arizona's uh, in our lower basin states uh, along the Colorado River and talking about water. I think this is a, a tremendous opportunity that we will have uh, going forward in the water conversation. And, and frankly, uh, to have uh, Governor-elect Hobbs there and somebody I th think that the Biden administration will abs actually you know, probably listen to about the concerns that Arizonans have on the water conversation will probably be very helpful. And, and I think that because the legislature serves as that type of check, uh, there, it won't mean that industries like agriculture or the business community are going to suffer for that, right? We are going to have to come, we're, we have big issues facing us and we are going to have to come at them holistically in order for anything to be accomplished. And I do think that that's an opportunity that we should most definitely take advantage of. Thank you. Andreas? Thanks, Joan. I'm going to stay focused on our economy, on our education, and on our environment. I am absolutely inspired by the fact that uh, the 3129 State House and the 1614 uh, State Senate, right, a near even split in the legislature, were finally able to come together in the year ahead and pass a historic bipartisan budget that invested in key priorities. Uh, of course, supporting your industry has been super critical. Uh, water is going to be a continued source uh, of, I believe, alignment because our air is only getting drier and hotter every single uh, month, frankly. And we did also have a historic water legislation that was passed in 2022, uh, the largest investment ever in shovel-ready projects for conservation. There, you know. 
none of these issues, whether you're supporting uh, bio uh, industry and, and the biomarker testing, for instance, uh, water conservation, supporting our community colleges, which haven't been funded since 2016 by this current legislature. Looking forward to that being a key priority, Senator Shope and, and Joan. There's not a D or an R issue next to this, right? Uh, it is, these are Arizona issues, and I think that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, Governor-elect uh, Hobbs uh, and I did meet last week along with Leader Tedan. It's my understanding that Senate President Warren as well as uh, Speaker Toma also met with her yesterday to discuss how we're going to move forward. And what I don't want, similar to Senator Shope, I think he just su suggested, is I don't want this to be an administration that's going to be focused on veto power, right? Uh, we Democrats are going to stand united in solutions for uh, job innovation, for creation, for protecting our environment, for supporting our schools. And that's, I really, truly believe, the framework that we're entering with the 56th legislature. Well, thank you. And I think, you know, with the three of us, we're all taking a major cut in pay to try and do what's right for the people of Arizona. And I mean, I, I would be the first one to vote them a raise because this is ridiculous. But the 24,000 a year, come on, that's tremendous. <laughs> well, you only work part time. Right. <laughs> they do not work part time. So as we look towards the future, okay, we, we do have some big challenges, but we also have some tremendous opportunities. And as I said earlier, you know, inflation is not good, but inflation is good for the general fund. So you know, in the first four months of the year, um, based on JBLC numbers, we have already are 676 point eight million dollars over the budget projection in four months. And just like some of the one-time money that the governor is still holding, you know, with the feds that he's going to have to deploy on, on different things, um, that you would think that when we have too much money, that's a good thing. If we don't have enough money, everybody works together to get it done. When we have extra money, everybody fights for their piece of that proverbial pie. And so it really becomes challenging for our elected leaders to deal with that. Um, we had that issue this year. It looks like you're gonna have that issue next year. So I'm throwing the ball back to you guys. How are you gonna deal with that? You can give it all to me, by the way. <laughs> Come on, TJ, go okay. for it. All right. Well, look, I, obviously we're going to have to, uh, f as I mentioned for the first time in you know, over a dozen years, work a uh, entirely bipartisan way. I mean, you know, the reality is, is that when you have di divided government, by definition, you're going to have some sort of bipartisan uh, solution to a budget uh, process uh, this year. Now, with the additional dollars, obviously, I will say yes, you're right, absolutely. One of the things we're cognizant of is threat of recession, things like that. We have a substantial amount of dollars in the rainy day fund. I think we are better positioned in 2022, moving into 2023, than we were, say, in 20, uh, 2007, eight uh, time frame. And I think that former Representative Robson over there probably still has bruises and is probably still banged up from those uh, sessions back in that day. Uh, but, you know, the economy is diversified here in Arizona tremendously from that uh, period of time. And the economy continues to grow, as, as mentioned, with the increase in the, uh, in the funds. So there are needs. There are still needs in the state. Uh, you know, we have, uh, I think, President Cano brought up Com Colleges is one for Maricopa and Pima County. The others uh, uh, obviously are still part of the formula, but we have not included those two counties in the formula. I, it's something I've been a proponent of uh, for the last decade. Uh, it is uh, something I hope to see there. We still have challenges uh, in transportation. We still have challenges in higher ed elsewhere. And obviously, uh, some of the priorities that this organization supports, uh, which are tremendously important in luring 
the uh, other industries around the country that want to locate elsewhere. Uh, you know, I think of things like Mayo's expansion up in North, uh, North Phoenix, uh, what we're doing downtown Phoenix, things like that, uh, are not really possible unless you have an organization like this pushing those issues to the forefront to ensure that, uh, that the uh, atmosphere is, is right uh, uh, here in Arizona for the, those types of industries. So it's something that I'll uh, be uh, keeping a keen eye on uh, as we uh, enter the session. Andreas? Thanks, Joan. Uh, I first want to really commend Senator Shope for the bipartisan understanding, the lens that he brings to the Capitol. Uh, I have not served as many years as he has in the legislature, but I've always appreciated the ability for us to figure out where the middle is. And uh, as your incoming Democratic leader, I uh, committed to my caucus not only an open door to business, but to all of the industries that are going to be critical to transforming our state uh, from uh, supporting research and development at the legislature, which unfortunately, of course, did not make it through in the last cycle, to supporting the Prop 400 extension that is critical to Maricopa County's investment. We've talked about uh, the universities and our community colleges, their extensive role, especially in some of those areas where we still need some help, right? We learned during the pandemic that our Navajo Nation does not have access to cleaning water. Uh, these are the things that are all part of the equation when we're discussing the budget, right? Budgets are a reflection of our priorities and of what we want to uh, see put forth. And my mindset has always been, it's not a matter of available resources, it's a matter of political will, the type of investments that we're going to be wanting to make. And so let's go up, let's dream higher. When uh, the University of Arizona was uh, proposed a, a $30 million investment to help us uh, preserve our state's water future, I was wondering why it wasn't a $300 million allocation instead of the 30 that is very important, right? Um, so that's just kind of the mindset that, that I have right now. And, and thank goodness we have a general fund that's continuing to increase. I have to also stand up for uh, the investments that the American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act made to be able to support federal dollars coming to Arizona. I mean, we would have a completely different landscape right now if it uh, were not for the members of Congress who passed those legislations um, and a president who signed them into law as well. Sue, so, um, and, and I remember when our president was the freshman senator from Delaware because I actually lived there at the time. Um, that's a story for a different day. But as we look out, and yes, we, we are building up those general fund revenues right now. Um, but, you know, Chairman Powell is also, you know, again, just had another interest rate raise. They are working to get inflation down, which I, I'm not sure that that's going to be the solution only because um, it's not going to address our supply chain problems, which are causing the inflation. But, um, you know, that, that higher cost of money is going to impact the state and is going to impact the businesses. Um, so I think that as we go forward, as we look at how we continue to build on the investments we have already made, we do need to address some of these issues like early stage funding um, because otherwise we're going to lose the ground that we gained. And um, the cool thing about the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund that you put into law this last year is that unlike you know, traditional venture investments where private individuals get rich, all of the equity in those investments is held in the trust. So the trust gets bigger, there's more resources for the state, and it continues to grow. And I think it was in the Senate appropriations where Tom Dorn asked me to explain some things in committee. We talked about the fact that if we had done something like this 20 years ago, um, for the Arizona Commerce Authority, we wouldn't be writing checks to the Arizona Commerce Authority anymore. They would be self-funding. So Arizona, with its pioneering spirit, I think has great opportunity to do that. Now, I do want to um, you know, watch our time, and we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, so if you had to pick one big issue, Senator Shope, that is a must solve when we come back into session, what would it be? Well, uh, 
you know, getting out with not more gray hair than I already have, but um, <laughs> that's not going to be possible. Melissa likes uh, your gray She hair. actually really does <laughs> like the gray, so that's fine. Uh, but uh, no, I think, look, ideas like what was just talked about right now, this health innovation fund, uh, things like that, I, I remember <laughs> one, uh, and not to pat Tom Dorn on the back, you know, but, uh, but uh I remember when he made that comment, and I, it kind of clicked for me. I was like, wow, that is such a, uh, uh, such a good comment to make because it's, it shows that if we actually do, I think, and I think this will lead to it, if we, people like us are talking to each other, ideas that we don't have a, a, in, that are in a silo uh, are going to come out and be in the open, and we're going to say, you know what, actually, that sounds like a good solution to this. We should go ahead and do it. Um, so I think on any number of things, is there a single big issue? I think it's uh, too soon to tell other than the generically said, you know, K-12, higher ed, water, transportation, things that have already been mentioned. Um, every session has its own character. Every session has its own tenor. Every session, whether it's the same people there, I can guarantee you the first session and the second session, we meet here again in next December. Even though the players will all be the same, theoretically, that following session will have a different character entirely than the one that we are currently entering. And with 40 freshmen, as already mentioned, uh, I thought I had a big class at 23 uh, 10 years ago. Um, that it's, it's, uh, you see this every 10 years, in a sense, with uh, redistricting because you have new districts, new people run, they, they, et cetera. But, uh, I think that, you know, until I, I've likened, and I'm a big boxing fan, I've likened what the session is going to be, and, we'll f and when people ask me what the big issue is, to watching a title fight. You spend the first three or four rounds dancing around each other to see what moves to the surface and what bubbles up as far as the, what the defining uh, issue of the session is going to be. And I think that's really, it really is gonna be what we do. For, most, for the most part, and remember during COVID, and I am almost embarrassed to say there are members, not just of your caucus in the house that have served for a term, but of my caucus as well that I've never spoken to, that I've never met. We had a whole law session that first session where there were no activities that were social in nature. And even last session, those social activities didn't really uh, uh, commence either. So I'm really looking forward uh, to, to that. And I believe that it will, uh, you know, we, it'll lead to a, I don't know, a little bit more normalization of things. When you don't have the social aspect with your colleagues uh, at an event like this, which wasn't taking place for some time, it does lead uh, to more acrimony. And I think that that is something uh, that I'm looking forward to see dial down a little bit as we go into the next uh, term. Absolutely. Representative Cano? Really want to echo the Senator's sentiment that this is really new turf for not only the incoming legislators, but also for, I believe, uh, Arizona, in which we haven't had a Democratic governor for almost 20 years. Uh, the chambers are going to continue to stay in Republican hands. and. You know, my first column in 2018 as a newbie was focused on bipartisanship. I will admit in front of a room of 200 friends that I've been a little disillusioned sometimes when that call for bipartisanship has now has not been answered. I do think that we have to do that with one another moving forward. Uh, I want a good budget. I want no surprises. And I do want us to prioritize housing. Housing continues to be an issue where uh, in the state of Arizona, 69% of all Arizonans over the last year have experienced uh, at least um, a $50 increase in housing costs. And part of this solution is going to be really looking at zoning policies. It's going to be looking at our continued investment in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. What role does government play in keeping uh, prices down and supporting a strong uh, workforce uh, that attracts people while also ensuring that those same folks that we're trying to attract have a home that they can afford, right, and not have it be in just, um, you know, the, uh, like in my district, people are moving out uh, into, uh, out, out of the city, going to the cheapest places where they can afford it, not because they, uh, you know, want a, a, a any different environment, that's just where they're going. And folks in my district, since the pandemic, have been really trying to figure it out. And this is not going to be an, is an easy issue, right, Senator? It's uh, 
um, there I will upset people moving forward <laughs> in all of that because of the kind of negotiations and compromise that we're going to have to make. And so I'd say that, Joan, Senator Shobe, um, and want to also uplift the fact that one of the things that I've paid close attention to, we put a down payment on water policy in the last legislative cycle, and it was really more focused on the 20-year plan rather than like the next two to five-year plan. Uh, and and we've got to do something with uh, the federal government starting to step in and really say you got to move. Uh, and so those are those are two additional issues, a little bit more that we haven't talked about that I wanted to give voice to. Yeah, and Joan, if I could really quickly, I think that you bring up a, a good point for the the housing conversation for the last few years because access to capital was cheap, has not impacted homeowners or people attempting to move into home ownership, right? Uh, when you have interest rates, I refied uh, a few years ago at like 2.75. You know, if you have the uh, availability or if you're selling a home, you're able to move into a different uh, space. With rates increasing as they are, it is now no longer a conversation about rent. It is a conversation about home ownership and the uh, uh, affordability of, of, of that overall. And frankly, delay what the delay in a person purchasing their first home. We're, it's like 1980 all over again uh, uh, when, you, when you talk about this stuff. So w that is the new wrinkle in this conversation. If there is one issue that could bubble up, I could easily foresee that one being one an issue that comes up. And I'm going to interrupt one more time just because I think what Joan and the members have facilitated is the ability for us to see common ground with 200 witnesses, right? And, uh, and tape. And, and ta oh, and tape. Oh, man. Oh. We're now, now we're really in trouble. Um, we're here to discuss really a, a, the, the major part that your industry has played, which is healthcare, right? And if we can't advance and protect uh, Arizona's ability to rent a home or to own one, there is no health care. Uh, there, it becomes a, it becomes a second or third or fourth thought, and that's why it's so important to continue supporting the fund. I wish we would have made that 20 years investment 20 years ago, because the endowment would be different today, as you suggested, Joan. Um, and so I'm excited to continue to make these tangible investments that are going to be super critical, super important, and most importantly, uh, ask all of you to pay close attention to those underlying issues uh, about economic justice, about income inequality. Uh, those are all part and interconnected to healthcare delivery. So as I look out across our next 30 years, you know, this third decade for AZ Bio, um, workforce is so important. And you know, one of the things you guys are going to have to deal with before the beginning of March is the education budget because we have a constitutional limit. Um, any ideas when they're going to start actively having some real discussions around that? I, I think we're out of time between now and the new session. Yeah, I mean, I've been pretty open. I, I'm very clear on where I'm at. I, I think it's a victory lap type of issue for, for especially for me. I've voted for budgets that increase K-12 spending, and the uh, fact that we're up against the cap is because of those budgets that have pushed us to the cap. So it's a no-brainer for me to take the victory lap, and I know that there won't be any rose petals thrown in front of my parade, but uh, <laughs> no. uh, metaphorical ones, I'm sure. All right, so, um, Andreas, I'm sorry, go ahead. No worries. I want to applaud Senator Shope for being an independent voice in his caucus, particularly as it relates to K-12 investment. The money is there for our schools to spend. It makes no mis It makes no. Uh, sense for us to try to hold our schools hostage to dollars that were already expended. And I, I support Speaker Bowers when he said, let's reform the cap altogether for the aggregate expenditure limit. Get rid of it so that we're not doing what we do to a lot of folks in this room, which is force you to have one-time expenditures at the legislature where you have to come beg us to do the right thing. Um, let's, let's fix it. Let's, let's, let's look 10 years, 20 years down the line. And that's my commitment moving forward. I wish that what, you know, there's a lot of rumors about us being in special session next week, and it sounds like it's going to be everything inside of the toolbox uh, for, you know, the, the, the wish list of the outgoing legislators. I would rather we focus on AEL, the aggregate expenditure limit, and making sure that we can support some good paying jobs and high quality investment with 400, the Prop 400 extension. That'd be my request. But I'm just, I'm uncertain. I don't know if I'll be in, if we'll be in town next week or not, you know, but that, Clean AEL, clean special session. <laughs> well, that you know what? 
that gives you guys a couple of really important things with deadlines to work on because sometimes when you have a deadline, you have to work to get things done. Um, so I, I want to, and I, and I noticed Jim wearing here, I remember my very first Trailblazers when Jim was actually in the legislature <coughs> and um, now he is with the City of Phoenix who's one of our strongest partners. It's very nice to see you, Councilman. Uh, but, you know, as we come up against our two-minute warning, um, Senator Shope, closing thought. I think the closing thought is, is um, you know, look, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not the most optimistic man in the world, and I'm not the most pessimistic man in the world. Uh, I believe that, like my pant color, gray is where 95% of everything lies um, and I think that uh, there you go um, uh, and I think that that's you know expectation level look temper it we're all doing something that we haven't done uh, and it's going to take a feeling out process here and I uh, some of it is going to take a uh, uh, you know just like any other job believe it or not just like any other job that any of you have personalities come into it, the, uh, uh, how important any one thing is to you personally comes into it, regardless of where the rest of your caucus may be or where the rest of the body is. Any of that stuff is always at play, and that's why all of this stuff can be very different uh, from year to year. But it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting time, so pay attention. Make sure that uh, your, your voice is heard down there. And if there is one thing I will leave you with, it's the same thing I told the Phoenix Chamber this morning, which is if you don't know who your legislator is, reach out to them. Find out who they are, reach out to them. It is always a lot better to go ahead and, and do that on the, f on the front side of making your request, whether it's pro or con anything. Build the rapport, invest in us, because we have most definitely invested our time in trying to serve this state. So please go ahead and, and feel that you can do the same and you'll find out that you'll like some of us or you may not, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but it's always a gamble and life is that way. So please do it. Representative Kano. Well, thanks again, Joan, for the invitation. I'm ecstatic to continue the conversation and open my office doors to all of you. I see uh, folks in the healthcare industry, uh, Dr. Barakat uh, with uh, Cigna, I want to say thank you to you for all of your leadership throughout our state, the University of Arizona, who continues to be a core part of our work. I see the city of Phoenix, lots of folks. Look, my, um, my vision, and he's going he's, he's gonna to be very shocked when I admit this, um, my vision is to... Uh, be like Senator Bowie, who has been absolutely crucial in trying to seek common ground and figure out where uh, we can actually develop some consensus. Um, I'm going to miss Senator Bowie's leadership and contributions. I hope you'll join me in welcoming him to this new chapter outside of the legislature, but I think it's a good example of the, the spirit of optimism, the spirit of hope, just like Senator Shope. I don't know what's going to happen under this new administration. We've never uh, seen it uh, uh, happen, and, and it's, it's, it's a good problem to have, particularly because Governor-elect Hobbs has a lot more Democratic members than the uh, former Democratic Governor Politano had, right? And so we have an ability to come in and be considered in our world the majority party, but we're just not that, right? We are Arizonans first and foremost, and the electorate continues to have sent that near even split chamber, and independents continue to be a huge voting block in Arizona. And so uh, I look forward to supporting uh, biosciences and the industry, and we'll continue to stay focused on figuring out how we can deliver solutions for you and your members, Joan, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. So as we wrap things up, I'm, first of all, to see all of you here and healthy and working together to make life better for everybody in our state, thank you so much for everything you do. I'm getting older. My guess is I'm going to need most of you before I end my journey. Um, but 
from all of us at AZ Bio, on behalf of the AZ Bio Board of Directors, uh, we want to wish you a very happy holiday season and a healthy holiday season. We'll see you in January. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.